Hello, everyone. Welcome to Feedstuffs 365. Joining us today to discuss sustainability in the food and ag space is Andrew Utterback, Senior Manager Sustainability with Ingredion Ingredients. Welcome, and Andrew. Great to see you today. Hi, Sarah. Great to see, see you as well, and thank you for the invitation. So tell us about Ingredion Ingredients. What, what is the company? What is it all about? And what is it that you do? Yeah, for sure. So Ingredion is a global, we're in the Fortune 500, we're in the uh, 490s, we're a food and beverage ingredient manufacturer. And so what we do is we take raw agricultural commodities and turn them into high value sweeteners, uh, starch applications. We have a business that does plant-based proteins. We have a sugar reduction, which is interested in low or no calorie sweeteners from stevia and allulose. So basically what we do is we take ag commodities create them into ingredients for the food and beverage and, and the industrial um, applications as well. And then uh, we have our customers that are mostly CPGs, consumer facing companies and things like that. So we hope to, you know, uh, increase uh, formulations or make better formulations for our customers, better shelf life, um, better taste, better texture, whatever it is, and then allow them to, you know, increase their market share with better products, with better ingredients from us. And then my job personally, so I lead our global sustainable agriculture programs. And so what I do is twofold. First, I work with our growers across the world to uh, take the value in sustainability and sustainable agriculture that we see with investors and our customers and help incentivize our growers to choose new or better practices on their farms to you know, decrease their environmental footprint or help them de-risk uh, practices that they would like to choose. They're just not sure if they can pull it off. So we want to take value in sustainability and bring it back to the grower because we find the grower is, you know, our key. It's our biggest scope three footprint. And we want to help those growers lower their impacts. And then the other piece of my job is to work with our customers, you know, CPGs, NGOs, investors, and others to um, to supply chain, you know, full supply chain um, projects. So a customer might be interested in re reducing their scope three emissions. Ingredion is interested in the same. We might have a supply shed that we know goes into products that they purchase. And so we can work together again to take that value, work with a grower. Maybe we can incentivize them to plant cover crops, which reduces their GHG emissions. And then we can measure those. And then Ingredient and the customer can you know, take, take credit for that. And that looks good with consumers and an investor community as well. You're working on all sides from a sustainability standpoint. And it sounds like kind of getting the sides to work together as well. Yeah, I don't do the same thing two days in a row for, for work. And I, I do appreciate that. It can be a challenge sometimes, but it's a, it's an interesting and dynamic space for sure. So here's a question you might get asked fairly frequently. How do you define sustainability? Yep. So that is a tough one. And uh, first, I'm going to say I don't think there is any one definition of sustainability. And two, I'm going to look at this more from a an agriculture or sustainable ag regenerative ag perspective. So when I think about sustainability, I think about it as resiliency. And, and I see that in two areas. First, it's resiliency for the growers and the suppliers in which we work with. We want to help them make better decisions and have better environmental outcomes on their farms so that they exist, you know, for future generations, you know, their children and their children's children and grandchildren, you know, on down the line. So we want to help them with, with resiliency in that, especially in the face of a changing climate. You know, I think the status quo isn't going to be something that's going to be successful into the future. But the other part of that is a lot of the growers and suppliers we work with right now, they do a great job already without interventions from us. So we want to also help them tell those stories, you know, be advocates for themselves and help people that are removed from the farm understand the great work that's already happening. And then the other part of where I see it is resiliency across the rest of the supply chain, right? Ingredient needs to be great partners to our customers and to our investors. So we need to be smart and intentional in how we're running our programs as we think about in the face of climate change. How are we going to be resilient? How are we going to be prepared to succeed? in a world where we might not know what it's going to look like, you know, 30 or 50 years from now. So when I think about sustainability, I think about ag sustainability, I think about regenerative ag, and I think about resiliency in those supply chains. So how important is sustainability to consumers at this time? And have you seen that growing over a period of time? Or where where is that trending, would you say? Yeah, for sure. Sustainability is still a hot topic with consumers. You know, we do a lot of market research. And I would say sustainability used to be maybe top five, top seven. And if you polled, you know, what are the things that are most important to you as a consumer? You know, is it price? Is it availability? Is it 
you know, there's a lot of different choices. And I'd say in the last few years, those have moved up on the hierarchy of what consumers are paying attention to. And I think there's a couple different pieces, right? There is the environmental sustainability. So they want to know that, you know, what they're purchasing is coming from um, a place that's trying to have as low of a, a GHG footprint as possible, or it has a little effect on water quality or quantity as, as possible. And then the other piece is ethical sourcing as well, right? You want to know that the ingredients in the things that you're purchasing are coming from somewhere where people in the communities are being treated in a way that they should be treated. And so, yeah, consumer interest in sustainability has, it's increasing and I think it is still increasing. Do you do you see a difference? You mentioned two different, you mentioned environmental and ethical. Do you see a difference um, in, in level of interest among consumers or any kind of changes there at that, uh, you know, on those two things? Yeah, to a certain extent, there are differences. I think some of that comes from what the commodity, the underlying commodities are. You know, I think there are some crops that are a little more of a challenge to source, source ethically. And I think consumers are becoming more aware of what those products are. And so you need to be able to prove on some of those more difficult commodities that, yes, we're doing these in an ethical fashion because consumers now understand that there are issues and there are challenges there. And they want to make they want to feel like they are supporting companies that are are doing the right thing in those areas. And then, yeah, environmentally, I'd say that's a little bit more broad, broadly applied across consumers. You know, it's not just the high end or the high value. I think a lot of consumers are starting to care about sustainability and it's starting to filter down from what we would call higher value, higher margin products to maybe some of the more mid-tier products as well. And you folks are involved um, in GMO, GMO corn, I believe, right? Yeah, so we are a company, we want to give our customers choice. So yes, we source genetically modified corn, but we also have large non-GMO programs as well, both in North America and globally. So what we look at it as is we want to be able to help our customers hit niches and fill in gaps for what they need for what they're trying to formulate too. So we are agnostic about GMO, non-GMO. We're open to either. Um, we just want to make sure that we can support what our customers need. Have you seen the GMO, the non-GMO, that kind of trend changing over the last couple of years? Yeah, so I would say GMO or non-GMO has increased, um, say in the last eight to 10 years, I think that it was a rapid increase. And now I think we might be leveling off some, but it's still increasing interest and I think there have been some interesting um, tie-ins. I think some consumers assume that non-GMO is also more sustainable. And I don't know that you can necessarily just make that as a blanket statement. I think sometimes, you know, if you have a GMO version that yields slightly better and needs less inputs to produce the same commodity, you know, there's an argument to be said that maybe that is more sustainable. So again, we're looking at trying to hit preferences and helping our customers understand that in formulations, you know, between non-GMO and GMO, there are considerations around sustainability as well, right? It's kind of a bit of a matrix. And we like to kind of have a menu available. You know, if you care about, if you want GMO and you also want to reduce the GHG emissions of these products, that might be a tougher conversation, but you know, it's one that we want to see if we can help them formulate into. Kind of that same misunderstanding sometimes uh, takes place when it comes to plant-based products, that they're more uh, sustainable uh, or, or use less water when really you have to look at the whole equation. I, would you agree with that? Yeah, right. So plant-based and the right applications can for sure, yes, be um, a much more sustainable choice. But yeah, again, I think you have to be careful sometimes with blanket statements. I think you need to look at try to compare on an apples to apples basis as best you can. But yeah, you know, we have lines of plant-based uh, proteins, you know, isolates and concentrates that we would say have a lower footprint than some of the alternatives. But again, it depends on where they're going to, what they're made out of, what quantities, you know, how much processing does it take to get there? But yeah, we're, we're comfortable and we're confident in the sustainability aspects of our plant-based offerings. What about for the investor community? Are they really focused on sustainability as, as one of their criteria? Yes, the investor community, I'd say in the last three or four years, the interest has taken off exponentially. I think, you know, if you think about it, it was about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, when BlackRock, like the giant institutional investor, said that sustainability is going to be one of the top things they look at for companies moving forward. You know, every other investor in the world sees that statement and they want to try to kind of ride that wave as well. So, yes, we get more and more investor interest and questions about sustainability in the last three years than we had in previous years. And, and it's great from my perspective, right, because we, I think, are a leader in sustainability. And I think we have some really great programs and some really great material and things to share. 
And so we're excited that it's moving in that direction because we feel like we're prepared to, you know, show the investor community the good work we're doing. And I want to remind those folks joining us here today to post any questions you might have for Andrew there in either social media or the Q&A window. So, Andrew, on a scale of one to 10, where would you put the food industry currently from a sustainability uh, standpoint, with 10 being very sustainable and one being kind of kind of poor and we need to do a lot more work? Where, where are we at? Where's the food industry at? Yeah, from my perspective, I would say the food industry right now is probably around a seven, but with that arrow pointing up. Right. I think that as investor and consumer interest in sustainability has picked up, it was a really strong signal, you know, flashing at the food industry like this is going to be a differentiator in your marketplaces. You need to start putting programs together. So while it's, you know, say six or seven, which, you know, what is that? A C plus B minus. We're also we're doing the homework. We're putting the work in. And I think as an industry, we're rapidly improving those scores and, you know, doing a lot of work and investing a lot of money in sustainability. What about agriculture? Where would you rank it on a sustainability scale? Yeah, I think agriculture is probably higher than the food industry right now. Okay. But I think sometimes ag has a, a, a marketing problem almost. Like I said before, uh, one of our one, one of the things we try to do in our sustainability programs is advocate for the work that our growers are already doing without interventions from us or other people in the supply chain. It, at this point in time, if you're a large row crop farmer in North America, odds are you're making a lot of sustainable decisions every day, because if you aren't, you are going to be out competed by your neighbors, you know, cash rent, you're not going to be able to afford, you're going to fall behind. So in my opinion, even if you're not talking about it as sustainability, the, the ag, the growers that we work with, a lot of them don't think of it as pure sustainability. They think of it as a good business plan, a smart business plan. They are maximizing the number of dollars they can make per acre on their farmland. And sustainable choices or what the industry would consider sustainable is a big piece of the decisions of what they are making and how they are maximizing the profits on their farms. And so part of my job, like I said, is how do we help those farmers talk about the great things they're already doing? How do we get credit for those? How do we link the consumer, the investor and the CPG to the good work that's already happening on the farm? So as we look at the farm, what's your crystal ball show for the next three, maybe five years mm -hmm. out? Any major changes in, in the regard to sustainability? Yeah, sure. So I think the big buzz that's really picking up steam, especially in the last 12 to 18 months <clears throat> is regenerative agriculture. Mm -hmm. And that's another one of those kind of like sustainability or natural where I don't think we have a full working definition of what regenerative agriculture is yet, but there are a lot of organizations and groups um, and CPGs and supply chain actors working on defining what that is. But uh, to oversimplify, I would say regenerative agriculture is a more narrowly defined set of practices and measurements and outcomes that um, organizations can focus on working with their growers to not only, you know, kind of check the box and say, hey, we're in some sort of sustainability program, but to have measurable outcomes and improvements that you can show on the farm. And then the other piece of regen, I think, is that some of these practices, it might not be a one or a two year payback in terms of you know, dollars per acre to the grower or um, soil quality improvements and things like that, GHG reductions, water quality. But I think as an industry, we're realizing that and that we're in for the long term. And some of these projects might be a three or a five or a 10 year payback, but we're also willing to invest and work with growers on that longer term scale to get the longer term impacts that are going to help farmers, you know, into the future with their operations. So if I'm a farmer and I want more information on sustainability or I want a better understanding, am I doing things right on my farm or, or what else do I need to know? What are my other options? Where, where should I turn? What should I do? Yeah, I mean, there are a ton of great resources, right? Um, if you're on this call to link today, find me, find me on LinkedIn, send me an email and I'm more than happy to answer questions. But for a larger, right, your extension agents, your NRCS office, um, large organizations like Field to Market or the Sustainable Ag Initiative, would it be great resources? Um, talk to your co-op or your seed dealer. And, you know, a lot of the input providers are getting into sustainability as well. I think it's getting harder and harder as a farmer, as a grower to say, I don't have access. I don't understand. I haven't heard about this. I think that so many people are interested in, and care about it now that if you, if that's your opinion on it, you are kind of, you're kind of playing the ostrich and ducking your head and kind of avoiding that information. Because I think 
the, the information is available and it's out there if you're interested. There are parties willing to help you make better decisions on your farm. Any final words of words of wisdom here for folks? Yeah, so maybe kind of along those lines, Sarah, what I would say is that one of the things I really like about sustainable agriculture and where we're at right now is that it really is in a pre-competitive space. You know, as Ingredion, maybe we care about the corn acres in, for a large row crop farmer in the U.S. Well, one of our com competitors might care about the soy that comes in on rotation every year of the year on those fields. We are in a place with sustainable agriculture where we can work pre-competitively with that other company that cares about the soybeans and make it a better offering to the growers, right? Instead of them only seeing me every other year on that field because I only care about the corn side, they will see my soybean counterpart and there'll be interest in projects and money and incentives and agronomy support and other things to help them. And so to the bigger picture of that is if you're interested in improving on your farm with sustainability, there are partners here willing and ready to help you and more than ever before, I think there are openings for projects and actual dollars and cents to help you make some of these decisions than there ever has been before. You know, the USDA rolled out the Climate Smart Ag proposals and they put a billion dollars into it. And industry took that very seriously. And, you know, everybody that cares about agriculture in the U.S. right now has proposals into the USDA hoping for funding. And my hope is that a majority of that money goes to the farmers because that's where the real change is going to happen. And some of the partners we're working with understand that. And that is our focus. And that's what we're trying to do. So please, if you're interested, find someone outside of your farm, you know, like I said, NRCS, USDA, whoever it is, and they can get you to the right connections to, to help you find ways to improve, you know, on your farm if you're interested. Lots of great information on sustainability and, and some advice on how you can uh, take a look at it and, and apply it to your operations. So thank you, Andrew Utterbach, Senior Manager Sustainability with Ingredient Ingredients. We appreciate your time and insight here today. Thanks, until, next, until next time for Feedstuffs, I'm Sarah Muirhead. Thank you.